The name Tuba is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Rad, verse 29, as follows Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul kulub. Those who believe and whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah fall without doubt in the remembrance of Allah. Two hearts find satisfaction. For those who believe and work righteousness is every blessedness and a beautiful place of final return. to have a guest speaker amongst us and today our Jumu'ah Khatib, mashallah, is none other than uh, Imam Abdul Wahab, alhamdulillah, who hails from Awal Masjid in Belha. Um, Imam Wahab is well known to many of us, uh, a person known to not mince his words. So, inshallah, we look forward to a very informative and uh, very entertaining talk, inshallah. Tafadl Sheikh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله العلي العظيم our respected ulama, respected elders, brothers, sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, the cherisher, the sustainer, and our salam and salutations upon the Holy Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his lusses companions. Qala rabbi shrahli sadari wa yisirli amri wa ahlun ukaratan min lisani of kawkawli. The topic for today is the imbibing of the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the first aspects that we need to clear up, and that is a lot of confusion amongst the Muslim Ummah, is that we know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, La nufarriku bayna ahadim min rusuli. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given most of his Anbiya alayhi salatu was a duty to perform on this earth, in this dunya. And therefore they came with a universal message. But then again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah says, Tilka rusulu faldalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. Minhum man kallam Allah wa rafa'a ba'dahum darajat. Those messengers, says Allah, we endowed them with gifts, some above the other. This is Quran. And to some of them Allah spoke and others he raised to degrees of honor. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the greatest of honor of being Imam al Anbiya. Because with any grouping within the philosophy of Islam, there has to be an Imam. And that Imam was chosen by none other than Allah. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Imam al Anbiya. And he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect this deen, this great, great ni'mah and gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And that is why in this age of materialism, when we speak about the kalima la ilaha illallah, we all understand it. But Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most important part of it because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to this earth as a human being, not as a malaika. And he is the greatest creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That he is a mercy unto all the creations and all the worlds that Allah has created. Most of them are unknown to us. And that is why when people say to us that Kul innama ana basharun mithlukum. When Allah says in the Quran, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, proclaim to them that I am a human being as you are a human being. What does this mean? 
The first thing is that many people have stumbled here. This verse can be translated in two ways. One is the way of kufr and the other way is of iman. It has been translated by some people like you which leads to kufr. If anybody says that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like X, Y or Z, then you are speaking the greatest falsehood against the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No human being is like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what do they mean when they translate it in this ugly fashion? Is it like any other human beings? No. We don't even as Muslims come close or near to him. And one important understanding we need to develop is that all the prophets of Allah had some kind of a duty and they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for certain gifts. And to take Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam for example, he said, oh Allah qala lan tarani, he says, walakini, I want to see you Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, walakini indhur ilal jabali fa in istaqarra makanahu fa sawfa tarani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, if this mountain can withstand one little atom of my light, you but see only a little, a little bit of that light of Allah. And we all know as the Quran described that the mountain split asunder and Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he fainted. And that is why one great scholar and poet, he says, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he fainted at the tajalli of Allah. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam went into the very presence of the arsh of Allah and he observed Allah with a smile. If we understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, we will then understand the role of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi He's at the very core of our deen. Secondly, we find Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was taught by Allah to make a dua because he used to stutter. And it was taught him, Qala Rabbi shrahli sadani wa sirli amri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Alam nashrah laka sadarak. That we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had opened up the chest of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and filled it with beauty and piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last is, my dear brothers and sisters, in this particular topic. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam said to Allah, oh Allah, am I the most learned? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, go to such and such a place where the two rivers or oceans meet. You will meet a man there that will teach you a knowledge that you do not have. Nor have I taught you that knowledge. So you have to also learn another prophet from a knowledge of another blessed person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no human teacher. He had absolutely no human teacher. His only teacher was who? It was Allah. Wattaqullah wa yu'allimukumullah. And therefore in terms of a human understanding, we are all murid or students of another human being. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was murad for he was only the student of Allah. None other. My dear brothers and sisters, when we speak about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to start reflecting and imbibing is beauty into our way of life. And we need to imbibe this prophetic spirit of care and compassion. Reflect that prophetic beauty which is so central to his being. And it was deeply rooted in his obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are living in a world today that seems so devoid of mercy. So bereft of the characteristic of beauty. If we find that everything in our country and throughout the world is going up, people complain, you know, petrol is going up, this is going up, that is going up. Electricity is only going down. But if we look at it, the only thing that is cheap in the world today is life itself. Where people kill each other throughout the world. You look at Sudan, Muslims are killing Muslims. You go to countries who have got rid of their tyrants, they're fighting amongst themselves. Life has become so cheap. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us one very important aspect 
of how precious life is. When he said to a few of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an, and even to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, they were sitting one day, he was sitting in his, in his quarters with her, and they were looking at the Kaaba. And he said, oh Aisha, you know, verily these Arabs, they love this Kaaba, these four walls. But he said, I swear by Allah, that the honor and a life and the blood of a Muslim is more sacred to Allah than the Kaaba itself. If we understand that, my dear brothers and sisters, and we look at the earth, it's filled with anger. It's filled with hatred. It's filled with wars. It's filled with intolerance. It's filled with oppression, injustices. The world needs the guiding line and the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that merciful rays into the maddening darkness that we have in this so pervasive world that we are living in today. Perhaps in this confused world, the one devoid of inner beauty may not appreciate the beauty all around him. And that is why the great poet Shadi of Siraz, he said, Oh complainant, what is your ailment? Imbibe beauty and you will see beauty everywhere. He went on to pen the immortal words in some of his poems and he said, The Prophet وسلم, reached the highest state by his sublime character. He removed darkness by his beauty. Excellent are all his characteristics and achievements. Salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his family. My dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, he said, narrate in Sahih Muslim, he says, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is indeed beautiful and Allah loves beauty. What are the definitions of beauty and the criteria for beauty? And they all stem from the philosophies and the principles of the Quran, which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Sometimes we find there are other conceptions of inner of beauty. However, as a Muslim, we have, need to have both an inner and outer aspect and understanding of what beauty is all about. And according to the Islamic worldview, the relation, reality of creation is a dual one. The physical and the spiritual, and the inner and the outer. Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, he beautifully stated and he said, the eye perceives the outer and the surface of things, but not the inner essence. What did he mean by this, my dear brothers and sisters? One of the things that we are concentrating in our world today is that there is all, always this inner display of Islam. We find we want to wear the turbans, the jubbas, and the long beards and everything. No problem with that, you will be rewarded for that. But that also needs to be displayed in the way that we live. It's like I always tell people when they come to pray and make salah. You see the guy coming and his face is all angry. Who is he coming to pray to? He's coming to pray to Allah. When he walks in, he, he meets his Muslim brothers. What should he be doing? He should be smiling. Why shouldn't he be smiling? What is he angry about? Maybe his wife kicked him out. That's why he came to masjid. But even then when you come to Allah and you're praying to Allah, you need to have a very beautiful way of looking at things. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us a very beautiful dua. Where he said, Allahumma kama hassan ta khalqi fa hassin khuluqi. But when you look in the mirror and you look at yourself and ourselves, he says, oh Allah, you have made my outer physical good. Make my inner character good as well. This is so important. Certainly, something or someone cannot be viewed really as beautiful if it is negative, harmful, hurtful, even if we embellish its appearance. That's why you have a very harsh saying, saying in Afrikaans, Have you heard it? Outer beauty must emanate from inner beauty of the spirit of the soul to be truly considered beautiful. You know, there's an incident where Abu Lahab came to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who was standing with him 
was Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And Abu Lahab came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Anta qabih. He said, Oh Muhammad, my nephew, you are ugly. The Rasul Sassam turned at him and smiled and said, Thank you. Abu Bakr and Umar said, Rasul Sassam, you know, they, they reacted and said, Yeah, Rasul Sassam, you look beautiful. Why didn't you, you know, answer him or whatever? The Prophet Sassam smiled and said, He only spoke of what reflected when he was looking at me from his inner self that was reflecting from me to himself. So when he looked at himself, he saw the ugliness of himself. And therefore I did not react. When you said to me, I look beautiful, it was a reflection of you, your beauty that reflected from myself to you. That is why my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he said, Allah doesn't evaluate us not only by our outer appearances and deeds, but also inspecting our inner hearts. That is why this hadith is so prevalent in today's day and age, where the Rasul sallallahu said, Inna Allah la yanduru ila atasamikum, wa la ila suwarikum, wa la kin yanduru ila kulubikum wa a'amalikum, narrated in the Sahih of Muslim. Where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Surely Allah does not judge you by your bodies or your appearances. He rather judges you by the sincerity of your hearts and the goodness of your deeds. This is very important. Sometimes we think, we pray five times a day, we read Quran, we do whatever we want to do, and we say to ourselves, no, alhamdulillah, I'm going to attain the Jannah. That's not my right and your right to decide if we're going to Jannah or anyone else is going to Jannah. That right is only the right of Allah. Understand that very clearly. One day, two ladies passed away in Medina to Munawwara. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala said, they were discussing of these two ladies and the one, they, the conclusion they came to, that the lady who read Quran the whole day and got up in the middle of the night and made tahajjud, she's going to Jannah. The other one only made a normal salah, nothing extra. So they said, no, she's going to Jahannam, and this one is going to Jannah. The Rasul Sassam heard him, he got angry and he said, who are you to decide? Verily I tell you that Allah has told me, the one who stood up and made salah at night and read Quran the whole day, she is going to Jahannam. He said, what do you mean? You only looked at what was apparent about her, you did not know the inner about her. And she's to sit and read Quran, but she's to have a bad habit. Maybe it's applicable today also. It's like I always say sometimes, the man's kingdom here as he frowns And the Prophet Sallallahu said, because she is to fitna the whole day about others, she eradicated all her good deeds. So we don't decide on that. My dear brothers and sisters, as I said before, the world seems, seems so devoid of beauty. It appears to be so filled with anger, hatred, wars, intolerances. The world needs this guiding light and the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How are we going to manifest that into our way of life, my dear brothers and sisters? We know his character. We know how he behaved. And if we reflect upon his prophetic beauty in our character, by imbibing his mannerisms and his attitude. Mannerisms and his attitude. You know, some of us don't have an attitude of gratitude. You know what that means? You know, it's like it's been raining for quite a while every day. We're all guilty of it. Yeah, when is the rain going to stop? If it didn't rain, my dear brothers and sisters, Cape Town is one of the few provinces in, in, in South Africa that has water. So what we should be doing, sitting on the musalla, and what should we be doing? Thanking Allah. But we complain about everything. And we need to say to ourselves, let's be contented sometimes in what we find ourselves in. What is the prophetic approach? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was empowering rather than controlling. What that means? Empowering rather than controlling. What does it mean, my dear brothers and sisters? You know, sometimes we get married, the wife wants to control you, and the husband wants to control the wife. There's no such thing in Islam. 
The Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to ask and advice and guidance even from his wives. After the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, they performed the Umrah. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an, after they performed the Umrah, the Rasul sallallahu said to the Sahaba, go and cut your ear. Go and cut your ear. They all just sat there. And the Rasul sallallahu was upset. Why? Because some of them did not like the, some of the uh, clauses of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So he came back into his tent and was very upset. And his wife, Ibn Salama, she asked him, Ya Rasul Sassam, what is wrong? Your face is so sad. He says, it's the first time that the Sahaba never immediately obeyed me. She said, why? And she listened. So she said that, oh, my beloved husband, will you take my advice? He said, yes. He said, you go and cut your hair. And they will go and cut the hair. He went to cut his hair, and every single Sahabi went to go and cut the hair. He taught by example. But he was empowered with a decision that was given to him by a woman. And sometimes in our lives, we see throughout the world, we sometimes cut out the women in our society. Instead of empowering them, we want to rule them and govern them and control them. It doesn't work. They have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also as part of the beauty of his creation. And it's good if they challenge us. The Rasul sallallahu was challenged by his wives. And it was good because that's the spice of life. And sometimes you have a wife who listens to everything it becomes very boring. So sometimes we need to listen. Secondly, when it comes to our children, we need to empower our children and empower each other. When we want to empower our children, we teach them by example. And we also lead by example. And the best way of making one's children love you is that if we love them in return and we give them love from the very beginning, from the day they were born. And this was the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inspiring rather than dictating. The Rasul Sassam never used to dictate to the Sahaba. If they asked him a question, he would answer. He never said, I'm the Prophet of Allah. You know, who are you to ask me? No, it doesn't work that way. If you have a question for me, you, you ask, it's your right that I have to answer. And I, we need to inspire each other. And that is why there's a very important saying, when we dictate, we become dictators. And that is why sometimes let's stop dictating, let's start inspiring each other. Like Muhammad used to inspire his Sahaba. Uplifting rather than judging. That's a major problem with us as Muslims. We don't uplift people, we judge people. We push them further and further down. One of the great scholars of Islam, the founder of the Tablih movement, Maulana Ilyas, in his book that he wrote, you know, at his masjid, he used to, he used to make salah. This one youngster was becoming, you know, uh, like an adult. But every day he used to come with a jubba and he had a nice beard. He used to come and make salah. Obviously, at 16, 17 years old, the youngsters will tell you, and some of us were the same when we were young. You know, you met your nice little cherry or whatever. She tells you, I don't like the beard. I like the smoothness of your face. <laughs> so you shave off the beard. Instead of wearing the jubba, what do you wear? The unholy jeans. You know what's the unholy jeans? Huh? What's this most dumb one? You pay more for the jeans with holes in it than one without it. <laughs> Am I right? And on top of it, of a tight fitting, with if a woofle man, man means a tight fitting will he? But anyway, so he dressed up like that, but when it was time for salah, he came. And he had a t-shirt of one of the soccer teams. I don't want to say which one I bet on. At this moment, I don't speak about him. And he came to the masjid and Maulana Ilya saw him and he checked him. Where's your beard? Where's your jubba? Where's this and that? And he scolded him out. The boy turned around and he left. He never ever again saw him in the masjid. He says that is one of the greatest regrets he had. He should have embraced him. And spoken to him in a manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased in this particular manner about how you should be. So he was judging this young boy, not realizing he also came to make salah for the sake of Allah. 
It wasn't his right to tell him what to dress and how to do. Then again, my dear brothers and sisters, let us rather see commitment than compliance in our lives. And we must ignite the moral imagination of the people around us. The Prophet ﷺ taught us by example that to be tough, you don't have to be mean. And this is something which is very important. In the upbringing of our children, we, don't have, we can be tough in how we bring up our children. We don't have to be mean. You now, one of the things, you know, one of the, in, in the Hafs class, two students came to me. Sheikh, we want to learn here, but I said, it's no problem. Afterwards, I said, why did you leave that to start? No, Sheikh, they hit us. I said, what do they hit you with? And this is amazing, eh? In this day of age, we still have people that think like that. He says they use that orange pipe. You know that orange pipe? And that's how they whack the kids. Are we sick in our heads? Is that how we teach Quran? I was taught by some of, by in fact, one of the foremost ustads of Cape Town and his Sheikh was Sheikh Salih Abadi. They taught with love. That is why we still love them. But by the time those children leave that ustad, they don't want to see him again. The only thing they need to remember is how much hiding they got. That's not the way of how Muhammad Sallallahu taught. And we need to change that. In the same way with our children. We need to change the way we bring them up. You know, sometimes you tell a child, you didn't make salah, you went to the fire of Jahannam. What nonsense. You tell a child that, oh my child, you know your Allah is not going to love you anymore. He's going to be displeased with you. Don't you want to please Allah? Automatically the psyche of the child will be, I will go and make salah. Maybe we need to sell down with the men also that, by the way. To be strong, you don't have to be cruel. The Rasul Wasallam was strong, but he wasn't cruel. To be religious, you don't have to be self-righteous. When we're religious, everybody else is wrong, and I'm the only right person, I'm the only person going to Jannah. To be on the path to Jannah or heaven, you don't have to send everyone else to, to, to Jahannam. Remember that. To be united, you don't have to be the same. To be right, you don't have to be rude. The Rasul Sallallahu when he rectified, he rectified in a very ahsan way. He taught the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala how to rectify. There was a man who came in who was drunk at that time. The Rasul Sassam didn't tell me, hey, drunk he ate. He didn't do that. He told the other Sahaba, take him out, give him a little whack with your sandal on your backside, let him become sober and bring him in again. When they brought him in again, what happened? It's like we are. Hey, they all, you're still drinking wine, eh? You know that? Whatever. And the Rasul Sassam heard how they cursed him and the Rasul Sassam said, leave him alone and don't curse him. He said, Verily I swear to by, the, by Allah that he loves Allah and Muhammad Sassam more than any of you. So when people are wrong, you don't push away, you rectify the wrong. And that is why the Prophet Sassam, he taught, you hate the sin, but you don't hate the sinner. That is very important to understand. The last thing is, my dear brothers and sisters, when to be pious, you don't have to consider others are below you. Remember that. And the, prophet, uh, the prophetic style of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to encompass everybody into his enclosure, be it black, white, or pink. How we speak to each other? You have a caretaker at the mosque. Say, see any for your caretaker? You say, please, my brother. Can you come here? And, and I'll end off. I'll tell you why I'm speaking about that. Do you know when COVID hit, the first Jumu'ah in the world, there was nobody in the haram except one sweeper of the haram. And he had a dream four weeks or five weeks before that, where he dreamt that he'll be the only person in the haram. And he went to a pious person to give him the, him the interpretation. And the scholar this Oliya said to him, a time will come when the entire world is going to come to a standstill and Allah will bless you to be the only person to perform Jumwa in the Haram. And that happened. 
So sometimes let us imbibe the beauty of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us live our lives. When we do anything, the question we ask, what would Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? That is how we do it. And remember when we imbibe his beauty. And that is why for us who make salah, salah is beautiful. It's absolutely stunning to perform salah. But we need to imbibe even that salah into our way of life. That is why Allah says in the Quran, Inna salata tana'anil fahshai wal munkar wala dhikrullahi akbar. Salah is supposed to keep us away from that which is lewd and bad. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. As soon as we leave here, as soon as we leave here, out of this masjid, we are open to the influences of the dunya. That is the time, the greatest remembrance is the remembrance of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and guide us insha'Allah to imbibe the character and the beauty of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into our way of lives insha'Allah. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balaghu al-mubeen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We say Jazakumullah khairan to Imam Wahab Hamdulai, a voice for many of us that is familiar, a voice that brings comfort. Alhamdulillah, I think I lost count the number of people who've told me as I was at the door, that's my Khalifa, that was my Ustad. So, mashallah, there are so many, some young, some old as well. So, um, there are so many that has passed through the hands of. Uh, our Imam Wahab and he is dearly loved by many. Inshallah we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him a long umr with good health and that he continues to do the great work he does at Bala at Awal Masjid and that inshallah that he graces us with his presence again inshallah. Um, unfortunately I have a long list of announcements and the risk one runs with announcements of this nature is that it will detract from the, message, the beautiful message that was imparted today. So inshallah as much as we want you to remember the announcements I hope, inshallah, that the main thing that you take away is the message that was imparted today, inshallah. So, getting right into it, the first announcement is that we would like to um, announce that, continuing on the theme of the, num the month of uh, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the month of Rabbil Awal, we'll have our Maulid Nabi program celebration on Wednesday evening, running from Maghrib to Isha, salah, inshallah. That's Wednesday, the 27th of September. And then we will also have on the 4th of October, which is a week later, we'll also have a special Maulid program. And that is for a special dua for our brother Noor Muhammad Karim of Giant, who tomorrow, the 23rd of September, it will be four years that he's gone. And his family is still filled with hope that he will return. And we are filled with hope that he will return. Inshallah, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings him safely back to us, inshallah. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants contentment and, and, and acceptance with the family, inshallah, and that the, uh, inshallah that we prevail and that uh, Brother Noor Muhammad Karim is safely returned to us, inshallah. And um, we all know what a great man he is and uh, his family still, they continue to support this masjid. His son Bashir um, called me earlier today and I know that we have a function at our madrasa this evening. Uh, great supporters of our madrasa and our madrasa will have a games evening uh, starting at 6 p.m. So we encourage all families, it's a family game evening. We encourage all families to please attend. Inshallah, it starts at 6 p.m., ends at 10 p.m. There will be games and lots of food for sale and snacks for sale, drinks for sale. And um, it's not so much about the fundraising. It's just such a wonderful opportunity to spend time with your family but within the precincts of the masjid. And what greater way to spend a Friday evening and then to perform Maghrib Salah and Isha'i Salah in Jama'ah with your family. So I can't think of a better way to spend this evening, inshallah, and we encourage you all to attend. And then also... Um, just as a, as a thanks to the community because I know this evening will be well attended inshallah but we'd like to thank the community for your generosity because it's through your generosity that alhamdulillah we managed to 
not only collect for the six orphan children that we are sponsoring for Africa Muslims Agency Aman School of Excellence, but we've managed to exceed that amount. So alhamdulillah, as a community, we've now audited the uh, numbers, and as a collective, within one week, we've collected 125,970 rand. Alhamdulillah, we make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to you for your generous donations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you in dunya and akhirah. And speaking of that generosity, we also now have another situation on our hands, and that is the plight of our Moroccan and our Libyan brothers. They are um, currently experiencing great loss. I'm echoing the sentiments of uh, Maulana Wasim last week that these are our brothers. They are part of our community. They've, uh, the Moroccan earthquake and the uh, flood in Libya has hit quite hard. Thousands have deceased and there are hundreds of thousands that are affected. So we, we appeal to you that our Jumu'ah collection for today, the entire collection will be split amongst the relief agencies, the Muslim relief agencies that, will, um, that are doing disaster relief work in uh, those two areas. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grants all those who've perished the status of the shuhada, inshallah, and, that, and, and give contentment and acceptance to the hearts of those who have, um, who have lost uh, loved ones. And I appeal to you to please dig deep and to contribute towards um, the fund, and that fund will be split amongst the various relief agencies. And with that, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة
إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الحمد لله الحمد لله حنان المنان غافر الذنب لمن يتوب والعصيان أحمد سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وأتوب إليه من كل خطية وسيئة ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الديان ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفي وخليل وخليل سيد الإنس والجان اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الكريم والرسول سيد سند العظيم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه صلاة وسلاما دائمين على ممر الدهر والزمان وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أيها الإحوة رحمه الله من خالف الشيطان وجناب السيئات والعصيان وألقى عذاب, عذاب النيران وتاب إلى الله الرحمن واعلموا إن الإنسان محصور في الخطية في كل حين وآن وهي التي لا تخصى بالتقرير والبيان وأكثرها تخصر في ترك الأدب وإساءة الأخلاق واختيار المكروهات ومخالفة السنن قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة وقال تعالى وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعثت ليتمم مكارم الأخلاق أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم قديم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ومن ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد 
ثم إلى أرواح ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وفاطمة والحسن والحسين وعلى سان صحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى نيم جمعين اللهم هذا الدعاء وعليك الإجابة وهذا الجهد وعليك التكلان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين واهد للكفرة والمبدع والمشركين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين اللهم وفقنا للخيرات ربنا نجنا من القوم الظالمين اللهم حفظنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا اللهم استر عيوبنا اللهم حصل مرادنا اللهم احفظ أولادنا اللهم احفظ شبابنا اللهم تمم تقصيرنا اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينعن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استقيموا صفوفكم استقيموا يرحمكم الله اللهم أحسن وقوفنا بين يديك الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين <تصفيق> يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من تغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقي فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا وينقلب إلى أهله مسرورا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله العظيم والتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نتوب إليك ونسألك توبة مغفرة إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يعود السلام فحينا ربنا بالسلام ودخلنا الجنة دار السلام تباركت ربنا وتعليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والموافة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم استر أوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه سبحان ربنا رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين